more hot weather and more wildfire danger across Texas, but we also have a bit of tropical mischief to talk about. A wee bit tropical depression with some rain. Let's talk about it in this special Sunday edition of the Texas Weather Round. Good morning. It is Sunday, the 20th of August, 2023. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Baldy and Chief David Reimer. As promised, we wouldn't leave you high and dry, unlike Mother Nature this summer, if we had some weather over the weekend. And, well, that's why we're here. First off, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're watching us on the Texas Weather Center YouTube channel. Hit that thumbs up button. And, of course... Follow us on the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app. You get these forecasts sent straight to your device along with interactive weather radar, your local weather forecasts, and storm chasing video. We do have a bit of weather to talk about over the next few days besides the ongoing heat and wildfire danger. Let's start off with the Texas, or I should say the tropical cyclone outlook from the National Hurricane Center. Overnight, they have not made any substantial changes to this. Still a 50-50 chance that we end up with a tropical depression or maybe a very minimal tropical storm when this makes landfall somewhere in South Texas. Tuesday. Now, regardless of whether this remains a tropical low as it is now, a tropical depression, or even a minimum tropical storm that would get a name, the impacts are unlikely to change from what we're forecasting. That's going to be some rainfall, some rough surf on the Texas Gulf Coast, regardless of rain, maybe a couple of tornadoes, and the potential for some Gusty winds, not really talking about a storm surge issue here, a big damaging wind threat, you know, the typical hurricane stuff. And this system will not be sitting still and dropping 20 inches of rain. Let's make that abundantly clear. This is not going to be a high impact rainfall event by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, here's the forecast rain totals with this thing from 7 a.m. this morning through all the way through 7 a.m. Friday. A couple changes here. You notice that we've lowered precipitation totals across portions of southwest Texas into the borderland, but have increased them across south Texas, the coastal bend, into the Rio Grande Plains. While yesterday we were generally optimistic about one to two inches, it looks like there may actually be a corridor of maybe two to three inch rainfall amounts. Not a overly large corridor, but hey, you know what? It's better than no rain at all. And again, this continues to remain focused mostly along and south of Interstate 10. Southeast Texas, you're not going to get much out of this. Uh, folks like Houston, Austin, San Angelo, you're going to be lucky to get a couple of showers out of this. While folks from Laredo, Zapata, over to Corpus Christi, all the way down to South Padre Island, could get between one to three inches of rain, especially Tuesday into Wednesday. All right, so let's take a look at the North American model. Now, this is not the overall best model to use for tropical weather forecasting, but it gives a pretty good idea of some precipitation timing with this. Again, we're not expecting a well-organized tropical cyclone in the sense of, you know, a hurricane out of this, but we are expecting an area of precipitation in proximity of this area of low pressure as it moves onshore on Tuesday. And you can see that from the North American model. We could have showers as soon as Monday along the coast into the Rio Grande Valley, South Texas, and that band of rain moves onshore on Tuesday continues moving west-northwest with the low before the low begins to dissipate across the Big Bend or northern Mexico as we get into Wednesday. Again, you can see there may be some attempt at some feeder band structure with this that could extend the chance for some scattered showers, maybe up to San Antonio, maybe Austin and parts of the Hill Country, but we're not expecting a whole lot of rain up there out of this, unfortunately. Um... But hey, if, you know what? Maybe if we can get some cloud cover up there, that'll help keep temperatures a bit lower. Uh, what we are going to have to watch for on Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, is the potential for a few spin-up tornadoes with this area of low pressure, as that helps to enhance the low-level wind fields. Now, this does not look like a big tornado th threat. I don't think we're going to have, you know, long-lived tornadoes out of this, but we could see some of those shallow, relatively low top showers and thunderstorms so common in these tropical environments try to rotate in a highly sheared environment, and that means there is a non-zero threat for a couple of spin-up tornadoes. And we'll have to keep an eye out for that on Tuesday. Again, not a guarantee, but something we'll be watching for just in case. And we'll keep an eye on it over the coming days. In terms of high temperature forecasts, well, if you're hoping for a cool off today, 
<laughs> That's 112 in Wichita Falls, 110 in DFW, 107 in Houston, 107 in Austin, 104 in San Antonio, 107 in Tyler, 104 Texarkana. That is 99 in both Amarillo and Lubbock, 102 in Midland, 105 in San Angelo, 102 in McAllen, 103 Corpus Christi. Here's tomorrow, same story, not a whole lot of change. Now here's Tuesday. This is where we start seeing some changes thanks to that arriving tropical system. Highs generally in the upper 80s to low 90s across South Texas. The coastal bend down to the Rio Grande Valley, deep South Texas, the Rio Grande Plains, thanks to the increased cloud cover. You can see pretty much everyone else still in the 90s, 100s. Here's Wednesday. You can actually see... Uh, from some subsidence on the departing side of this system, we actually bump temperatures up to the northeast and east of the system while dropping them thanks to rain chances and cloud cover in Big Bend National Park, southwest Texas, all the way into the borderland where it'll be in the 70s to low 90s. Uh, eastern half of Texas, you can see here, it's going to be triple digits galore. And then by the time we get back to Thursday, it's, it, 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 don't bother. And trust me, it's not going to get any better Friday and Saturday and Sunday of next week. I mean, if you want to be optimistic, uh, it's the middle 90s across West Texas, the Panhandle, the Permian Basin. Uh, I mean, that's better than hundreds, but everyone else is still going to be in the hundreds. And again, we're not looking at any big pattern changes for at least the next 10 days. We're probably going to go into September before we have any sort of chance of meaningful precipitation chances, aside from this little tropical thingy majiggy. And that's another, what, 10, 11 days? So I'm sorry I couldn't be more optimistic, but again, here's the rain totals over the next couple of days from this as it looks. And you can see this is not going to impact a whole lot of Texas. We're going to see the chance for some rain, thunderstorms, maybe a couple spin-up tornadoes out of this, gusty winds. I mean, I guess you can't totally rule out very localized minor flooding in South Texas with this, especially if you end up under one of the heavier storms. But again, this is not a drought buster. This isn't going to put a dent in any sort of drought. And by the end of the week, it's just going to be back in the triple digits with added humidity down there. But hey, you know what? I guess be thankful for what we're getting. It could just be 120 across the entire state this week. I suppose there's that. So with that being said, we'll keep an eye on things. Again, there's probably a decent chance this will become a tropical depression. Maybe, maybe, maybe if it overperforms a very minimal tropical storm, then it'd get a name. But we also have four other systems in the Atlantic trying to get names right now, which is why I'm not going to give you a name if it were to be named, because in all likelihood, I have no idea what it's going to be if all four of these things decide to go happy birthday at the same time. So... Again, whether it stays a tropical low like it is now, a tropical depression, or tries to be ambitious and become a minimal tropical storm, not really expecting any major changes to the forecast. As it looks now, the flooding threat is going to be limited. The threat for a few spin-up tornadoes there, but limited. Not a storm surge issue. Yes, there's going to be rough surf along the Texas Gulf Coast, and if you decide to go out and play in the dangerous waters, you're going to have problems, but, well, that's your choice. Not expecting, you know, big-time widespread winds, so we'll keep an eye on it, and otherwise, we'll talk to you all again in the regularly scheduled Texas weather roundup by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. If something changes, or, I mean, we have something to talk about, we'll probably do another one of these evening weather roundup videos, and this time I'll unmute the mic, but otherwise, y'all make it a great Sunday. Stay cool, and God bless.